Okay, Yishem Lomo, what the Avdalam Hashem's name will be blessed forever. We'll dedicate this to our class for Spirit Recovery. Any names you want to mention? Um, we are going to continue, Be'ezrat Hashem, today to talk about what we start last week about the month of Elul. This is class number two. Last thing we're dealing with, talking about the significance of this month, talking about preparation for this, uh, the month of Elul, and gathering as many mitzvot that we can. So we come before the judgment day, before God, before the court of heaven, ready. All right? So we've learned the difference, thank you so much. We've learned the difference between um, a man and a horse. Right? We left off talking about that the horse has no idea and it makes them no difference where, which, which road to go. Because he's led by the, the, the rider. So we should be in control and not act like the horse. And we have responsibilities. Okay? So... I want to continue from this point. Bottom line, when we recognize the power of our Creator, of Hashem, maybe, maybe we'll be able to treat the mitzvot differently, the tefillah differently. So Rav Shimshon Pinkus wrote that everything that we have in life is due to God's infinite uh, kindness. For example, he says that the fact that we can see that we can hear that our extremities function as, as, as they should. Uh, each morsel of food and drop of water that we receive is due to his kindness. We take things for granted. Just go visit in the hospital, just for a chesed, once a year, once a month. See how people are suffering. And we are, maybe we'll appreciate what we have. Pico says that we each receive billions of such kindness throughout our lives. This is what we remark in the prayer of Nishmat. When we say when we saying Nishmat, every Shabbat. Nishmat Kolchait right? So part of Nishmat we saying you saying probably the part in English, right? So how, you read in the Hebrew side? Yeah. And you understand what you're reading? No, when, Back and forth. Back and forth. Okay. Yeah, to be really quick. Okay. So part of the nishmat, it says, even if our mouth, right, our mouth will be filled with songs, and our tongues whipped back and forth like its waves, we will not manage to thank you sufficiently for billions of the kindness you have performed for us. Remember that. This text. Just for the fact that we are breathing, just for the air that we consume, that we use, we don't have enough hours during the day to say Hashem, thank you. Someone loses life within seconds, just for suffocation. People are not aware of that. They drown. I, was a, I just heard a bad, bad news from... I don't know if it's a family from New Jersey, but a, a, a guy from, uh, it's a very hush of yeshiva. He has seven kids. They were in a river. You heard that news? He saved his drowned, his son was almost drowning. He saved him and he drowned. Just happened yesterday, a few hours ago. He didn't expect that. No one expected that. People suffocating from different kind of things, from sicknesses, you know? Remember Corona? People were suffocating from it. I heard that, you won't believe it, a child, I don't know if it was two years old, I mean, less than that, he drowned at home in the middle of the living room. How is it possible? His mother had a bucket of water and she was swiping the floor she went into one of the rooms. He was curious. He fell in. 
legs out, head in. By the time she came back, it was less than a, a minute. It's gone. The baby gone. You know, this is this is something that, just for the fact that Baruch Hashem, think are we healthy and our kids are okay and our family are okay, we are okay. We need to thank Hashem every day. So we have davening tefillah three times a day to say to that to Hashem. Moidim anat mulach. Hashem, we thanking you. We should never take it for granted <coughs> because. We are used to uh, uh, receiving everything for free and without any effort on our part. It is difficult for us to accept the fact that everything depends on God's judgment and that any one of us might be judged unfavorably for the coming year. But Hashem gave us a gift. You can change it. You can fix it. You can make it better. Get ready. Rosh Hashanah is just around the corner. Mitzvot. Do more do chesed, more kindness, more tzedakah, more prayers. Bring more zchuyot, more merits to Shalom Aleichem, to your own account. When you be able to do such thing, your, the new year is, I don't want to say guarantee, but you had a better chance, better percentage to have a better year and a good year. Okay? That is why Rambam wrote, as cited above, as he mentioned about, that the Torah commands us to believe that God has the ability to punish us and decides our fates according to our deeds. Unlike other religions, they're saying it's just a matter of belief. It's not according to your actions, to your deeds. Even if you did something wrong, believe in so-and-so, you're good. You can kill someone, but if you believe in him, you're saved. Basically, you can do whatever you want, just believe in him. In Judaism, the Torah mentions that many times. It's all over the Bible. A man, a person, is judged according to his actions. And sometimes we've been judged according to our intention. And sometimes we get reward for good intentions. We were prevented from doing a mitzvah. Hashem saw our heart that we sincere. But something happened. I don't know. It was uh, bad weather. It was uh, bad traffic. You didn't make it on time. But you wanted to make it. Hashem will give you a full reward for it. We can get sometimes punishment for a wrong intention. Intention. So Rabbeinu Yona writes in, in Shari Tshuva, the book of the Gates of Tshuva, in Allah Five, and he writes, after one is committing a, 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 a sin, for example, he wants to eat in McDonald's, okay, cheeseburger. He's been doing it once, twice, three times, after the three times, after the third time, finish. If you have intention the fourth time, the next time, to go, but you were prevented from going, in your mind, you want to commit a sin. You don't care about the halacha and the Torah. From that point on, after the third time, it will be considered as if you ate it. Why didn't you go? Eh, you had a flat tire. You got there, you got over there, and they just closed it on you. For that intention, you will get punishment. So the only thing that can save us from these things is the shuvah. Hashem gave us all the tools to fix things and to make our life better. The physical life and the spiritual life. The person, the Ramsay, the person who becomes frightened at the very mention that Elul has arrived, you know, we're going this Shabbat to announce Rosh Chodesh Elul. And we are blessed next week because we're going to have four days in a row with Sefer Torah in the shul. It's not, it's not, it doesn't happen every, all the time. Monday has its regular Sefer Torah. Thursday, regular Sefer Torah, right? Reading in the Torah in the morning. The month of Elul is going, falls on Monday and Tuesday. It's two days. Two days. So from Monday night... Uh, let's say uh, Sunday evening, actually not Monday night, Sunday evening, we start to say Bar Hinafshi first Friday, Messiah Leviyavo, 
and, 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 and we're going to have Be'ezrat Hashem. No, I'm sorry. Monday night, not Sunday night. Monday night. Monday night. Uh, so you're going to have Monday, it's regular day. Monday night, Yale Viavo, not Sunday. I got confused. And Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is Rosh Chodesh. We have Halel, we have Musaf. It's a beautiful tefillah. Hashem is giving us all the chances to fix things. Okay, so make efforts to come to Shul and Daven with a Minyan and participate in Sefer Torah and all the tefillot that are going on. So the person who become frightened at the very mention that Elul has arrived is a person with strong disciplined faith and beliefs. Remember we mentioned the rabbis that used to faint when they heard that on Shabbat. Elul, Elul, oh my God. <coughs> they have to give them water to chill out. Where is, where is the person who ignores and dangers of God's judgment is lacking in his basic level of belief in God himself. So they announced of Elul. Hmm? Last month they announced about Tammuz and Av. And it's also another month. No, it's not just another month. The Magid Dubna. Magid Dubna is, used to, is a rabbi that used to uh, speak before uh, congregation, going from place to place, and he used to have a very special lectures, and he always used fables. So when you, un you understand the story of the fable, you understand the moral that comes out of it, the conclusion. So the Megid of Dubna in the Sefer Oel Yaakov used uh, Poignant, yeah, poignant parable. Poignant, like something strong, right? Strong fable. Mm -hmm. Poignant uh, 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 parable to bring home the difference between the period of Elul and the rest of the year. Because people are saying, what's the difference? The whole year you should be a good Jew. Fulfill Torah and Nitzvot. And do tzedek, and chesed. What's the difference? So he says, I'll tell you. Once a person moved to a new neighborhood when no one knew him, he chose the synagogue, found a vacant uh, uh, place in the corner, and made it his own. Of course, he did not speak to his neighbors during the prayers, but even afterward, he avoided making small talk with them. He went just straight back home. On occasions, he would approach the Gabbai to notify him of an upcoming yard site so that he could invite to read from the Torah and to lead the prayers. But other than that, he attempted to remain aloof from the congregation. Nevertheless, he could not completely hide his Gregorious, Gregorious personality and, and little by little, he became involved in community affairs. Okay, become more socialized. Right? Finally, the day came when the community proposed elections for a new synagogue board. By this time, this is a fable of Magid Miduvna, okay? By this time, this man was by no means a newcomer. And he announced his wishes to be nominated as a board member. From that day on, he switched gears. He flashed a smile to everyone wherever he entered the synagogue. <laughs> he became friendly all of a sudden. I wonder why. Wherever he went, he greeted each one warmly and asked about each one's wel welfare. Until now, he did not need anyone to know him other than the Gabbai. But now he knew that every vote counts. His success in the upcoming elections dependent on his relationship with every potential, potential voter. During the rest of the year, the Magami Duvna says, we are uh, uh, contented, contented with making sure, we're happy with making sure that we fulfill the major mitzvot that identify us as a Torah Jews, such as a Shabbat observance, keeping kosher, and the family purity and regular synagogue attendance. The other less important mitzvot are ignored 
for the most part. People asking questions all the time about the big mitzvot. Kosher, not kosher, family purity. I get this almost every day. They think this is big. It is big, it's big. But it's hard to tell which mitzvah in the Torah is greater than the other. And it's definitely more confusing when we see the reward for two mitzvot are the same when one is very easy and one is maybe the hard, one of the hardest mitzvot in the Torah. Both same reward to which I am referring to. Both mitzvot, if you do them, you'll get a blessing. Hashem says in the Torah, a long life. Honor your, Honor your parents, long life. And what other mitzvah very easy can take you two minutes. Honor your parents is only your, all of your life, even after their death. Mm -mm. A long life, the Torah says clearly about shiluach aken. When one releases from a nest the mother bird, take the chicks, take the eggs. Very easy. According to the halacha, you just lift it. It's, you acquired it, it's yours, you can put it back. You come in, it is, the mitzvah do something very special, it's not the time to discuss right now. But you see here, you get a long life, and he, very easy mitzvah, take me two minutes. And the other mitzvah, all my life, years. Same reward. Very confusing. How can I tell which mitzvah is greater than the other? With lotas, a mitzvah you should, <coughs> you should not do, you should not do. There is a way, an easy way to say which scene is greater than the other. How can I tell which sin is greater than the other? If I eat something, not I eat a McDonald's cheeseburger. Or, I don't know, I, um, I steal from someone's bicycles. Or I broke Shabbat. Which one, is, which one is greater? How can I tell? How can I tell as a simple person? I don't think it's uh, according to the... According to? You lawyers, you're supposed to know that. According to the punishment. punishment. When the punishment is greater, it means the sin is greater. Mm. When the punishment, let's say, is a monetary, uh, just to give it fine, oh, yeah. fine, or give lashes, lashes and fine, or, God forbid, executed. Make sense? Mm. So it's easy to know that. But normally in the mitzvot, we don't know. And Hashem did it for a reason, so we won't pick mitzvot. This is why I like, this is why I get a greater reward, I'll focus on this one. You don't know. You gotta do them all. So in the parasha before, few parasha before we read Ekev, Ekev. Ekev, like it means the hill, Ekev Tishmeun. It's very famous Rashi. Rashi says David, King David was concerned about the mitzvot that he is stamping with his heel, meaning he's not paying attention to a small mitzvot. And, and he says, I'm always worried about it. So I have to fulfill the whole mitzvot and treat them ac accordingly and, and equally. Mm -hmm. And he was always looking for a small mitzvot. What is a small mitzvah? Maybe, uh, I don't know, to smile to someone? To greet him with boker tov, shalom? It's a great mitzvah. It's small, it's big. I have to focus on this mitzvah and make it better all the time. Make sense? People rarely pay much attention to whatever they are speaking or listening to Lashon Hara. Whether they wash their hands properly before meals or engage in conversation during prayers. You know, it's interesting to see about the laws of Tefillah and Shulchan Aruch that uh, Rabbi Yosef Karo, the Mechaber, the author of Shulchan Aruch, going out of his way to explain how it's very important and not to speak during tefillah. You want to talk, it's fine, do it outside. And it says, if someone does that, you gotta go and rebuke him because his scene is grave, it's very big. And it's messing up for everybody in the show. You're talking, take, the Shekhinah is not there anymore. You see in the corner people davening with all their might all their heart, and some other other people messing up for the entire congregation because they 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 they're busy with conversation about who knows what. Do it outside. 
Don't, don't mess up for everybody. It's a grave sin. But people take it lightly. Yes? Does this apply to like, in the, like if the women aren't dominating and they're in the women's section? Like separate from the men? It's the same. They're in the place that not supposed to speak during tefillah. Boruch Atoh Eloheinu Malach O'Alom Shehakol Nihyo Bidvaro Thanks for the, the drink. It was, they didn't have cups there, right? I'm sorry, they did. They did. Oh, they did? Okay. So, small mitzvot, big mitzvot, um, to us, the for all, for us, should be equal. Should not differentiate and distinguish between this mitzvah or that mitzvah. You never know which mitzvah is greater than the other. During the month of Elul, however, we know that we are coming up for elections. Remember the guy with the elections in the shul? To be included in the book of life, we realize that we will need every vote. Meaning, we need every, what vote? What vote is talking about? Mitzvah. Mitzvah. Merit or mitzvah. We need every single mitzvah possible. We need every extra word of Torah study. Every coin donated to charity. Every ounce of care to perform the mitzvot and to avoid transgressing things. One vote might tip the scales to a year of happiness and tranquility, or, God forbid, to a year that will be quite the opposite. Therefore, during Elul, we gather as many mitzvot as we find available, hoping to weigh down the scale to the side of merit. All right, we all agree on that, correct? You have any, any, any question you want to challenge that? Mm. Because it's something you said a little earlier that when you were talking about the rabbi, you were to do a lot of and be afraid with when it was the month of Elul. Yes. It's just that I didn't know that this was the attitude that we should have. Were you, were you here last week? No. Okay, so you can, you can, you can see more information about it in class. Um, uh, it's on Facebook and on YouTube, and you can see it. Uh, I spoke a little bit in Lek with some examples and stories. People many years ago, 150, 200 years ago, when they heard the word of Elul, they got so, they got trembled with fear. Even though they are tzaddikim, they're righteous. They have nothing to worry about. So they stood and saw the rabbi got so nervous. He says, if he's nervous, what about us? I should be the, the extra, extra nervous. Yes. But I, I was kind of taught that, um, or I have heard some shearing that mm -hmm. Like right. closer to you, and so you're able to like... That too. To that, too. More, that, too. that too. That too. It's time to shuva. Correct. Hashem is more open to hear our tefillot. Right. Right. That too. But it doesn't take the fact that we should be more concentrated with fear, with awe for these special days. Don't take it lightly. I have to take it seriously. Not you. I'm talking in general. Mm -hmm. to take it, take, we have to take it seriously and take advantage of it. That's the idea. Okay? Now, <coughs> Sfaradim, Ashkenazim. Sfaradim, or in Yemenite, they have 40 days of Slichot till Yom Kippur. Okay, starting from Elul. Every day, every day, every day. The Ashkenazim had the custom to do the 10 days. It doesn't mean that if Ashkenazi wants to join Sfaradim and participate, it's, it's wrong. It's not wrong. It's not their custom. I would say the more the merrier. What's wrong with saying Khatano and Dutushuva? It's great, it's something wonderful. But why 40 days? Why not 35? Why not 50? Why not 20? Where does this number come from? When I say 40, well, well, what f number 40 reminds you in Judaism? Years in the desert. 40 years in the desert. What else? For 40 days in Mount of Sinai. What else? The blood of Noah. The flat on Noah. Okay, what else? We learned from scripture commentary that uh, it takes a, a baby. Like a baby, very good. Say it out loud. Yeah, 40 days to develop. 
to for embroy to fetus, right? Did I say it right? Embryo, embryo. So I'm sorry, embryo to fetus. Forty days. And which point he gets the neshama? Which point the neshama comes to the baby? When he born? When he is in the mother's womb? After the 40 days? Before? I mean, just a little sale? We'll discuss it now. Why 40 days? Do you know why 40 days? I just gave you a hint with, with the question. Our sages designated the 40 days from Rosh Chodesh Elul, next week, Monday, Elul through Yom Kippur for repenting and <coughs> raising our level in serving God. What is it, Davening 740, right? Yes, raising them. Corresponding to the final 40 days that Moshe Rabbeinu spent on top of Mount of Sinai during which God displayed his infinite capacities of forgiving and reconciliation. That is, that is no. what the, the, the Mizrahi custom for 40 days. It's Friday, good. And if that is because Moshe was on the Mount Sinai for 40 days? Yes. How many times Moshe Rabbeinu was 40 days and 40 nights a month of Sinai? Three. Well, from what you know. Wants to get the Torah. Three, three, uh, three. Yeah. What do you think? We thought it was two. So it's a common mistake, too. It has to be at least two. One for the first one, for the uh, broken, and then for the ring, right? So Moshe Rabbeinu was 40 days, 40 nights, a month of Sinai, three times. One for the first tablet, the second one to plead before God, right? And come then get. The second tablet. After Hashem, God forgave us. For the Till Yom Kippur, he was there. Three times. In a matter of hours, he came down, spoke with the people. In a matter of hours, he came back. So it's a total of 120 days. <coughs> right. You ask people, most people will tell you two times. But it was three times. It's in the text. As Rashi explained in his commentary to Shemot, 33, 11. What is Shemot? Exodus. Exodus. Moshe Rabbeinu spent three periods of 40 days on the top of Mount Sinai. Also, when Yonah, the prophet, forgot this point, came to the city of Nineveh, he proclaimed, quote, Nineveh is about to be destroyed in 40 days. Why didn't he say 20, 10, 15, 30? There obviously is something significant about the period of 40 days and its connections to God's judgment and repentance. I will discuss in a minute, okay? The Maharal of Prague wrote a number of, a number of times that a 40 days period signifies a fundamental change in this world. This concept appears several times in the Talmud. For example, our sages taught in Nida, Tractic Nida 30a, that it takes 40 days from the moment of conception, like we mentioned, until an unborn infant is basically formed. Um, this uh, concurs with uh, modern medicine marking six weeks from conception as the transition point from, as we say, embryo to fetus, right? Also, our sages taught in Tracted Benachot 99b that an unborn child receives its soul when? 40 days after conception. Likewise, when God decided to destroy the world through the great flood, he stated that he will make it rain constantly for 40 days and 40 nights. Rashi, in his commentary to Bereshit, Genesis, right, 7-4, huh? demonstrating that these destructions was brought about since the immoral practice of people forced God to bother forming the fetuses of illegitimate children. 
they betraying each other, it was a mess. Even the animal got influenced from that and they were mating with other animals. In order to understand this, you need to know a little bit Hebrew, what I'm about to say. Um, we said in 40 days you become a yelled, a, 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 a child, a boy. That doesn't mean boy, girl. A human being. How a child called, it's in Hebrew, it's called Vlad. Vlad. Vav, Lamed, Daled. What's the gematria of it? Lamed, 30. 6 and 4, 10. How it's together? 40. 40. Matches. Um, M, mother. Mother, it's Ima or M. M or Av. M or Av. M is, when M is 41. Mem and Av. Why she, why, when, in which point she consider M? When she have a baby. So she's 40 plus the one, 41. 41. She become M. She become. Just a little bit Hebrew and then you understand the concept. 40, in, in general, the number 40, every, many numbers has a lot of, the Maharal has a whole list of uh, significant numbers and all that. I heard it, I printed it a long time ago. It's amazing. The number 10, the number 7, the number 8, it's above nature. So it's, it's amazing. 40 represents. Uh, um, uh, something new. For example, f what is, what is uh, the letter 40 equal to 40 in the Hebrew? Right? Mem. Right? Chaf 20, Lamed 30, Mem is 40. So anytime you see in the Torah Me or from, Me means from. So from this point on, it means something new, something else. So the letter 40 represents something in you. It's a change. From this point, from this hour, from this uh, place, from, means it's something new. So Mara says the letter Mem or number 40 represents something in you. Okay. Rambam wrote in the laws of Teshuvah, and I, um, I highly recommend each and every one of you, to make efforts to buy the book of uh, Teshuvah <coughs> by the Rambam, it's translated to English. It's a very, very interesting topic. And he talks about how one should do a Teshuvah repentance properly. Okay, you won't find there where we learn about the number 40, what the Maharal has to say about that. It's basically said, how to do teshuva and which one and which way is considered as a bal teshuva amiti for real only gods know if you're sincere or not right only hashem can see your heart but hashem will put you in your mind they put you in a position to, to see if you are able to overcome the evil inclination or you will transgress or you will uh, uh, break the law of the torah again okay and this is our test. So teshuva is not something you just say, oh, okay, I'm going to do teshuva. You have to regret. You have to make an announcement. I'm going to do teshuva. And it must come with a vidui. Teshuva without a vidui is not a teshuva. As it says in the Torah, vehit vadu al hatatan, that they must confess their sin. So Baruch Hashem, we have it in the tefillah every day. In Shachrit, in Mincha, we do it automatically. And it's part of the Tuanes, right? Slach Lanu, please forgive us. It's there. If one needs to do Teshuvah on a specific scene, should consult with his rabbi in which way to do There's some easy tshuva that I'm telling you, easy tshuva way to do. It doesn't have to roll yourself in the snow like they used to do many years ago, or with fire, or, or, or many other methods that prevented people in a way, especially today, to do Teshuvah. It's so hard. So they remain in their sins. Okay, I have, I, okay, we have to finish it in one more minute. So let's do this. We're going to continue talking about the Teshuvah <coughs> of how the Rambam offered to do that. And I have a story to share, but I will leave it till next week. Next week, it might be a bit earlier in five or 10 minutes, okay? Do you have any questions? Okay. God bless you.
make efforts to do as many mitzvot as you can. Right now we have a mincha. Take advantage of it. Do the tefillah properly. Gather as many mitzvot as you can and may you have a very good year and a blessed year. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.